Okay, we are going to work on the flesh now, these figures. For my war game figures, I... No, sorry about that. For my war game figures, I try to do things very easy uh, with flesh. I have these four colors that I use for my flesh. The first is red leather that builds up. That's the base, base flesh. flesh. The next is, this is game color dwarf flesh. Next is uh, model color flat flesh, and then the highlight is basic skin tone. Now, you could go a little bit lighter, you could do sunny, uh, you could do maiden flesh. Uh, I have another color here that I use sometimes for the, the light, 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 well, light flesh. So, it all depends upon how much work you want to do. Uh, again, this is for war game figures, so I don't do a lot of, lot of detail in the flesh work. Just depends. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we applied the brown wash, we washed it away, and now I need to start working back on that flesh. So I'm going to apply some of the red leather back again to work on that tone. I'm going to get some water here. Glaze medium. What I'm wanting to do is just hit the high spots of the skin with this flush, with the base flush color, with the red leather. So the sun is hitting, coming this way. Uh, so this part of the skin is going to be getting the the highlights. Okay. This guy, bridge of the nose, cheek. So I've I've built up the the main color or the base color again. So then the next step I do is I use uh, game color Vallejo game color dwarven flesh, and I will mix that right back in with the leather. Now, again, what I'm going to do is just hit the highlights. I'm not covering the whole face with this color. I'm just applying highlights to where I think the sun would be hitting. back of the neck okay here's the arm let's see is this thin I don't want this to be really thick so in a way we're putting a glaze down
and sometimes you gotta go back over it again. Add some more. This is my trusty Windsor Newton. Okay. Got the other one. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. I'll look at the figures again, see if I want to add any more touches. Because we're building back up now with the color. Now, I don't want the flesh to be very pale. It's, it's red. It's going to be red. These uh, guys out in the sun, on the field, a little sunburn. Dots are wonderful. You can do a lot with just putting a dot someplace. Of a highlighter in a lighter color, it can bring out features. Okay, a little bit more for this guy. That's all I'm doing right now, putting dots down. If you think of it that way. Awesome. Okay, now I'm going to uh, put a hair dryer to these real quick and then move to the next color. Okay, these guys uh, were put under the hair dryer. Now I'm building up my flush color. I'm going to use the Vallejo flat flush. And I put it right into the mixture I had before. And I mix that up. So we've got all three flush colors mixed up in this one color. Again, there's other ways of doing this. I'm sure there are people in cynics are saying, oh, you shouldn't be doing that or whatever. Well, oh well, this is what works for me. So, again, where is the light? hitting the most. Sometimes you get to put a couple dots on to build up that layer. Put 
put it on the bridge of the nose top part of the cheek So, what I like is that the reddish flesh, mid, the darker flesh in, in the mix there, with the highlight of the, the highest light here, breaks that up. Yeah, this is when Elheim figures start coming alive, in my opinion. More, much more to alive. Okay, so I missed my spot. I made a mistake. Because I have a wet palette, that paint is still wet, and I can go over and fix it. back and start tricking the eye putting highlights there okay so now I'm gonna just do one more and I'm just gonna jump well no I'll go with the, the basic skin tone Basic skin tone. Mix that in. Okay, these are going to be even smaller dots. <laughs> and then again, I'm going to be putting them where I think the light is hitting the 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 direct, the most direct. So I'm going to put a little dot right up there. And on the bridge of the nose, right there. Right there. Bridge of the nose. Okay, so I'm very happy with the way that looks. It's just perfect. That's what I'm wanting. Again, this is for a war game figure, not a golden demon. On to the next step, we'll paint the gloves and then start working on the hardware. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to move on to painting the gloves that are around the hands. And then we'll jump uh, from the gloves, and well, the gloves and the boots, and we'll jump from that to the hardware, the highlights. So I'm going to start with my base color, which was desert yellow. I'll stick that out there. Now, I am not applying thick layers of paint. This, that's not what this is about. Um, I like painting in layers, thin, thin layers. So, I've got my... So what I'm going to do then, is I'm going to take the first dark desert yellow, and I'm going to apply that 
to the, the area of the gloves that's going to be lighter. And also on the boots. Again, I don't do a lot of work on the boots because they're all going to get dirtied up. I will just start picking out just the raised areas, just bringing out some detail, that's all. Okay, there's that glove. Put it around the fingers. Boots. Sometimes your brush might get too wet, too saturated with the paint. Just wipe it off, reform the point, and go back and get some more paint. Getting the fingers and the knuckles around the foregrip. Working on some of the treads of the boots. Again, not a lot of detail, just Bringing out the highlights, top the raised areas, that's better. Bringing out the raised areas. Okay. Okay, so now I want to start getting lighter. And I talked about white, and I don't use white a lot. I do my best not to use it. So I, I try to find colors, especially when painting war game figures, that transitions quicker and... and, and um, that's a highlighter color, that's a lighter color. So in this case, in my opinion, dark sand is the next color. So I'm going to take dark sand and apply it straight to the, dark, the desert yellow. I'm going to blend those together. I talked about painting dots. Well, this is where, again, we start painting dots. Painting dots and little, little lines on raised areas. Areas that the light is going to hit. creating an illusion of light here. hand seems to be a little stubborn in my opinion with building up lighter colors so I just add more Hope 
you can see that. Okay, so the light is hitting the ridge of the wrist or the hand, and I'll just hit a couple of the little fingers. Put the thumb there. Again, I'm not too worried about the boots. Okay. Um, to me, that's not enough. I want to go one shade higher, one shade lighter, I guess. And I'm going to use uh, pale sand for that. Now, the other challenging thing with, in my opinion, working with different khakis and stuff is that in the end, if you're highlighting something, it could potentially all look the same. So, you got to be kind of creative with how and where you apply colors. You don't want to apply light colors closest to other highlighter, you know, lighter colors because they'll just all disappear. And if I don't like something the way it looks, the glazing and the shading that we do with the different uh, washes will hide it. It will, it will change it. And also remember, these gloves are going to be dusty and dirty, and the desert sand is, or the dirt is, can be very light, almost a white at times. Little dots in the knuckles. Okay, one more. Let's see here. the boots it's creating illusions here lines okay okay so now we're gonna jump into the hardware of the rifles and the magazines this one doesn't have that so I'm gonna put him aside right now. So it concentrate on these two. I don't know if you remember for the hardware I chose desert yellow. I really don't need that much. And tan yellow. It was a color, it was a different combination. I mix those two together. So I'm just gonna. So where's the light at? Where's the light hitting? What am I wanting to highlight? The top part of the, the buttstock. And this is just using the base color. This is not just. This is not the highlight yet. 
this is just trying to get back to that okay now we've got the railing foregrip Top of the rails. I'm still at this point not too worried about definition because the definition will occur again with the glazes, the washes, and then I do, um, well, the term that MIG created was pin washing. Um, I call it outlining, but it will, that's where you really create definition, and uh, that's where you really frame out the figure. Okay, so now I need to highlight this. And you know, I kind of talked about the 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 issues sometimes with dealing with khakis and stuff. You don't want them all to look the same, and it could sometimes easily happen. So uh, what I'm gonna do is add some Iraqi sand to this. It's a different different khaki. See what this looks like. May not even see a difference. That's okay. Yeah, I don't see much of a difference with that. Just a slight. But that's okay. We can figure it out. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of that pale sand to that color or actually you know what I might just use an ivory just a bit of an ivory ivory is not white that's close to it but it's going to be enough to make a difference to separate things And again, if I don't like it, when we do the shading with the washes, we can create definition with those. And there's ways to create the separation from the different parts. Put in the top there. Well, 
Let's edge that out a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Now that I still, while I still have the pill sand out, this is right there. I need to work on these sleeves. So, nice base color. I'm not too worried about shading here or definition. Again, that's going to be taken care of with different colors when we do. Uh, the glazes and the shades. Trying to get the edge there. So I did add some ivory to this. So with this, with that ivory added, I want to just hit the top areas. Okay, cool. Pretty happy with the way that looks. Okay. Yeah, from here it looks like it's just one color. But I know what the washes are going to do. Okay, let's talk about the top part of this hat, or this helmet. I use beige camouflage for the sides and then the nod mount so I'm gonna go back over that create some definition here break up all this the khaki And one of the easiest ways to, to, to break this up is with the outlining. Now there's a color that I like using sometimes. Uh, and it is uh, Mint Green by Reaper. I'm going to add some of that Mint Green to that beige. And what that's going to do well, you'll see. It'll make that color green, a greener, a beige green. And it will be enough for me to, to add to this and break this up so I can see the detail work, so I can see that there is a different part on this helmet than just khaki. I wanted to stand out, not to the point of it being white standing out, but I want the color to be different, subtle, still khaki, still beige, 
but just a little green. And again, it's kind of hard to see definition. There, you may not see much definition at all with this, but that's okay. So I'm going to add some of that pale sand to this. One, two, oh, I need to reform my point. Going to edge out a little bit and create texture stippling. Do the same thing up here. Okay, almost done with this part here. I love adding mint green to things. Okay. Nothing fancy. Uh, there's work that needs to be done to... There needs some shading to be done here to bring that out. But that's okay. Do some edge highlighting here. Okay. He is done. Let's bring this guy back so I don't forget anything. Okay, now we are on to the rifles themselves and the nods okay For the rifles I used the rubber dark rubber Panzer Aces color go back to that really don't do too much with rifles. Not at this scale at least. You know, um, I just try bringing back the, the, the edges. So I'm just kind of doing edge highlights over that that rubber, the dark rubber again, building that color back up because we'll use a lighter color to make a transition. Time I'm just making dots again. Okay, last one. I forgot the glasses. Let's see. Ok. 
cannot forget the glasses. I like mounting my figures on jars. I've used blue tack. I've done this for years. Uh, Mike Brown taught me this. And uh, I mean, it's just nice because I can spin it around. It can work pretty fast. So I'm constantly moving the figure around to see okay, what, what do I need to do now? Okay, so a lot of times um, if I'm highlighting a gray. I'll just grab a gray color that's close to me <laughs> and uh, and I'll blend them together. I'll mix them together. This happens to be London gray. Again, I want thin layers, not thick. So I don't want to hide any of that detail. I want to, I want to make it pop. So I'm just putting little lines and little dots on areas where I think the light is going to be hitting it. the boom mic here and glasses the top of the nods Good. Sorry about that. Continuing with the gray and the weapons and the handle, heat shield, Look at the nods. Sunglasses. Here, bridge. Okay. Okay, not a lot of work. Just trying to break things up.
I'm just looking where I can add more highlights, that's all. Mike again. Looks good. Okay, that's the guns. Now uh, I've got a couple little green things to do. Where did I put that green color? There it is. We've got the magazine box. And the muffs. Not a lot to do. With magazine boxes, I just like to hit the, the lines, I like just to outline it. Start building that up. Right there. Okay. Now, I don't want to go white with this, so I'm going to see what else what I have on the palette so far that I can use for a highlight. Let me add some of this brown. All I'm wanting to do is, again, hit those, the, the, the creases. Make it stand out. for focus. Okay, if I still don't see the, the exact look that I'm, the effect that I'm looking for, I'll add a little bit more of the pale sand. I'm going to run it right across here. There we go. That's what I'm just looking for. So edging that. That's all I was wanting. This stuff can get darker, and we will get darker with the washes. I'm gonna screw myself over here. Forget anything on that guy. Okay. So, looking at these figures, other than highlights that will happen and shading that will happen after the multicam has been been applied, I am done. I am done with the base coats of all these figures. Uh, may not look a lot right now. Uh, you may not be able to tell a huge difference, but there is. Let's see if I can... So, next stage is the multicam.